So, uh, this is an interesting story. It's a little bit off the beaten path. I wouldn't normally talk about something like this, but it really piqued my interest, so I wanted to bring it up. Naomi Osaka is the world's number two ranked female tennis player. And um, let me show you what happened with her. So, she was fined $15,000 by tennis officials for refusing media for the sake of her mental health. The organizations that run the Grand Slam tournaments said in a joint statement that Osaka chose not to honor her contractual media obligations. So that's the first thing that happened. Is she was fined $15,000 for not um, talking to the media. And then within the next day or two, she withdrew from the French Open, which is a major. And the reason she cited is like, listen, I struggle with depression and anxiety. And um, it's a lot for me to handle the the talks with the media, and so I'd rather withdraw than play and be forced to talk to the media. And, you know, she she released a, you know, relatively short, maybe mid-sized Twitter statement on it where she announced it. And um, there's, I'm surprised at how there's a very polarized reaction to this. I see a lot of people saying, hey, listen, it's par for the course. Part of the gig is you got to talk to the media, so you got to talk to the media. And then I see other people saying, this is courageous and brave because you're being open and honest with what you struggle with and responding in the way that you think is best for your mental health. So I've seen all these different reactions. And interestingly enough, the, the people who are making the argument that she should have to talk to the media, most of them that I've seen are in sports media. So, and they admit, like, hey, we're a little biased on this front because this is really our job is to deal with this. So, but they say, no, she should have to talk to the media. The way I view this is I never understood why professional athletes were forced to do things outside of their their core job, which is be the best professional athlete you can be. In the case of Naomi Osaka, be the best at tennis you could possibly be. In the case of Phil Mickelson, be the best golfer you could possibly be. Whatever it might be. Now, listen, there's going to be natural variation among the personalities of all these different athletes. Some athletes are going to be incredibly outgoing and want to talk to the media. Some athletes are going to be incredibly introverted and not want to talk to the media. Some are going to suffer with anxiety and depression and want to avoid the media. Some are going to have, uh, you know are going to be manic and uppity and they f feed off of and use other people's energy to fuel them and so they'll love talking to the media. There's going to be that natural variation. I never understood punishing the introverts or punishing the people who are struggling with mental health or punishing the people who aren't struggling with mental health and just don't want to talk to the media. I never understood punishing them for not talking to the media. Now listen, I'm biased in the sense that I'm part of the media. So obviously, I'm not sports media, but I'm media. Um, I think politicians have an obligation to talk to the public because they represent the public. Athletes don't represent the public. And so I don't view answering questions that are usually shitty, by the way, from the media. Um, I don't view that as a necessity. I don't view it as part and parcel of her job. And honestly, I'd put aside the depression and anxiety thing. Because I think it would have been fair if she said, I don't suffer from depression or anxiety, I just don't want to talk to the media. Her job as a tennis star is to be as good at tennis as she possibly can. And then let her game talk for itself. That's it. That's it. I don't... Now, the argument that some people make is like, no, part of the job of being a pro athlete is to keep the public interested and engaged, and so you have to be a public figure and talk to them and provide statements and give a window into your life. All I could say is, I disagree. I disagree with that. She didn't sign up to be a professional commentator like I did. Part of my job as a commentator is, yes, to give you guys, you know, a view into my life, to give you guys... Every little thought that I have, everything with no filter to let, let it all out. That's my job because I'm a commentator. She's not a commentator. She didn't sign up to be a commentator. She's a tennis player. So I just don't understand why 
people would be demanding on that front when her game speaks for itself. I just, I don't view it as um, a necessity. And I think it's really weird that, like, people would rather force somebody to talk to the media than let them do what they want. Now, if she wasn't great at tennis, that's a different question. You know, like, there's plenty of examples of people who are really good with the media, but maybe not really in the top, top echelon of their sport. Anna Kornikova is probably a good example of that. I hate to be the bad guy, but it's true. In golf, Ricky Fowler. He's good, don't get me wrong, but he's not top, top echelon, but he gets a lot of media because he has the branding thing where, like, a lot of the kids like him and he wears the bright colors and he's, like, a fan favorite in that respect. So there are different kinds of, of athletes, but the, the core thing that you're supposed to be doing is be good at your sport. That's it. Be as good of a tennis player as you could possibly be. Be as good of an athlete as you could possibly be. I don't care about the other bells and whistles. And if you do, I think it's a bit of a category error. So I don't think it's part of her job to, like, have to talk to the media and field their shitty questions. And they generally are really shitty. That goes for almost all sports media. I hardly ever see any incisive questions in sports media. So let, let her game talk for itself. They should really change the rules and just make it... It doesn't have to be... Just make it not mandatory. The, the baseline could be, hey, we want everybody to come talk to the media, and so here's your time that you're supposed to do it. But if somebody opts out of it, who cares? Who cares? And I don't... Again, I don't even think you need the argument of I'm depressed or I have, have anxiety. But definitely, if she brings that up, she's like, this is why I can't do it. I have a terrible fear of talking to the public or whatever. Of course let her slide. Of course let it go. And she felt like she had to withdraw instead of dealing with the media and dealing with the public. I mean, the way I look at that is like, obviously she feels this shit in her core if she's willing to go to that extent, to that extreme to avoid the media. Obviously, there is no fake in it. And I don't even know what faking it would mean on this front because again, I feel like even if she wasn't suffering with mental health issues, she still should have the right to be like, I don't really want to talk to these guys. I just don't view it as part of the job description. And I don't buy the argument that like, well, if they all don't talk to the media, then nobody would care about the sport. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. The real purists watch just for the sport. Just for the sport. It wouldn't have mattered if Michael Jordan never said a fucking word to the media if he was doing what he was doing on the court. It wouldn't matter if Tiger Woods never said a fucking word to the media if he was doing what he's doing on the course. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's not part and parcel. Of, of the job. So people might assert that it is and pretend that it is. I just simply disagree with you. I just simply disagree with you. And this goes for any sport. You're not obligated to talk to them. If you, want, if you were obligated to talk to somebody, you should have become a professional talker, professional commentator. Then you're obligated to give your thoughts on everything. Outside of that, listen, and if you leave it up to the players, enough of them will want to talk because there is giant variation among people. Some people feed off that stuff. So, let them do all the talking. There's no problem with that at all. So, I just don't understand this draconian approach. And, um, you know, if you make the argument, hey, they're getting paid so much, so they have to do all these things. Again, I disagree. The reason they're getting paid so much is because of what they're doing on the court. So, it's not like, therefore, whatever the higher-ups tell you, you, by definition, must do. No, not if it's unreasonable. <laughs> if it's unreasonable, and if I don't think it's fair, and if I don't think it's just, I'm not going to do anything the higher-ups tell me to do, and don't just point to the paycheck and say, well, because of that, you should. No. <laughs> How about that? So, yeah, I, I'm definitely on her side on this. But I have to be honest, I don't love a lot of the arguments that the people are making who are on my side of it, when people only focus on the depression and anxiety thing. Because I think that that misses the main point, which is even if she wasn't depressed or anxious, I still would defend an athlete who's like, I don't really want to talk to the media. Why? It's just not my thing. I don't want to talk to him. I'm going to go play. That is your job. That is your job, no matter how much people assert otherwise.